So welcome back guys to another video on Kids Coding Playground. Today is the second part for the Rock Blaster 2.0. So before I'm going to start, I'm going to um, go through the code a little bit. And you guys can put anything you missed. So this is the custom block for creating the enemies. Uh, when it starts as a clone, what will it do? So this is the code for the aliens and rocks. So for the player, we just have the movement and just the start game right here and then um, today we might as well work in the laser for today so let's work in the laser so I have two costumes a single shot and triple shot so I'm gonna make it start on the first costume so I'm gonna start with the one flat clicked um, switch costume to the single shot and then I'm gonna set the size to 10% so it isn't too big it'll be like a small laser and then I want it to hide in the beginning and then when I when I receive start game when I receive start game then um, I want to get a forever loop forever if key space is pressed I'm doing I'm doing um, the space bar to shoot you guys can do any key you want if space key is pressed then I'll create a clone of myself and wait until not key space is pressed. So what this does is make it so the player cannot spam, um, cannot hold the space button, and then it will keep on shooting really fast. So we just put the wait until not key space press. So then you have to like manually click the space bar every time you shoot one bullet. So and then when we start as a clone, when I start as a clone. Then you want to go to negative 160 as the player. Go like somewhere right here in the front of the player. So negative 160. The player is at negative 180. So you want to go near the front of the player. And then you want to get the Y position of the player. So if you want to do this, you have to check this one first. Player, Y position. So you want to get the Y position of the player. And then you want to show. Repeat until touching the edge. So the bullet will keep on moving until it's touching the edge. Repeat until touching edge. And then I want to move 10 steps. And then delete this clone when it touches the edge. Okay. So now you should be able to shoot ant bullets as you can see but the bullets do not kill the aliens yet but you can still shoot as you can see and if I took this out this thing out then you could just spam bullets like this and I didn't want that so definitely remember to put this into your code okay so now let's go back to the um, rocks which is basically the aliens and the enemies stuff like that and get an if-then statement if Touching, touching laser. Then we want to change the money by 100. Each enemy you kill, you get 100 money. You can do it by any amount of money, but I'm just going to do it by 100. And then I'm going to make it go to 240, 240, and then pick random negative 150 to one, uh, negative 150 and 150 for the Y position. So 240x is like at the edge right here, and then negative 150 to 150 y is like from up here to like down there. So it'll spawn somewhere randomly from up here to here when it's touching the laser. So get a pick random negative 150 to 150, and then when it's touching the laser, I want to make it play the magic spell sound. I already have it, but. Uh, if you don't have it, just go to the sound library and get it. That's where I got it from. So next, I will get um, make the force field. So for the force field, um, we can we don't have um, the shop yet, but let's make some variables first. So we're gonna be making the uh, force field. Field. Oops, caps lock is on. Force field. Uh, force fields variable. So this is to, just to keep track. Of how many force fields there are and then for the force field code 
Actually, let's work in the shop first since the force field is, uh, you need to buy stuff in order to get the force field. So I'm gonna go to the shop real quick. Then, uh, when fly clicked, hide. Um, oh yeah, and, and we also have to do the pause button. I forgot about that. Uh, in order to get to the shop, you have to get to the pause button. So first, I'm gonna work on the pause button. Forgot about that. Sorry about that. So I'm gonna get a one flat click for the uh, pause button. And then we'll need to make a new variable called in shop. So this is to, um, just to uh, detect if it's in the shop. So when you press P, then it will not pause you in the shop. So, and then the shopping cart will not show up in the shop. So let's make a new variable called in shop. And we want to set in shop to no. Set in shop to no for now. So we want to set in shop to no because um, in the beginning the player is not in the shop. So we will always want to set in shop to no. And then we want to go to front layer. Go to the front layer. And then we want to hide in the beginning. We don't want the pause button showing in the beginning. And we want to make it go to the zero zero. So it will be in the center of the screen. And then when the key is P is pressed, key P is pressed, because P for pause, then if in shop is equal to no, that means the player is not in the shop. If in shop is equal to no, then we want to show. Then we want to show the pause button, letting the player know it's paused. And then we want to broadcast a new message called pause game. So pause game will basically just pause the game. Pause game. Pause game. And then next we want to work on the shopping cart. So now let's go to the shopping cart. So um, we already have the one flag clicked hide. So I'm going to receive pause game for the shopping cart. Then we want to set the size to 0%. So it'll like come in. It'll like, it'll like start at 0%. And then it'll get bigger. It'll look like it's like zooming in I guess and then you want to go to the front layer I want to point in direction of 90 so the shopping cart is facing the right point in direction of 90 and then I want to go to 150 negative 70 I already have these coordinates because it was from my backpack but 150 negative 70 is like somewhere right here and then we want to make a new variable called turn so this is just to make the um, the um, shopping cart uh like tilt left and right so we got to make a new variable called turn we want to set the turn to zero oh, i already have turn um because i uh, got this from backpack so i'm just going to delete it because i just made a new one so i'm going to set the turn to zero in the beginning and show and then forever um change the size change size by 50 minus the size divided by 3 so this is just to make it like when you move your mouse on it it'll get bigger and when you move your mouse off of it it'll get smaller so let's get a division and a subtraction so 50 minus the size of the shop which is 65 the size of the shop and then Divide it by three, and it'll change the size by that. And then we want to change the turn by four. Turn by four. And then we want to turn to the right or left. Turn to the right or left a cosine of turn divided by two. So it'll get like a little small number. So co what cosine is is just make make it a very small number. Um, so. The cosine ones, you have to get the absolute value one. Click the triangle and cosine of turn divided by two. Um, so this is when you put your mouse on it, it will kind of like, uh, not, you not put your mouse on it, then it will just like kind of rotate left and right. And then you got an if, if touching mouse pointer then we want to change the size so if it's touching the mouse pointer we'll change the size bigger else it'll change it smaller right here so 
We want to get a subtraction and a division. Get the division put in here, subtraction in front, and then 50 divided by this uh, minus the size divided by 3. And then next we want to get an if then statement. So if the in shop is equal to no and we need two ands and so if the sh if it's not in the shop so if the in shop is equal to no that means the player is not inside the shop then and touching the mouse pointer and mouse down so that means it will open the shop and change the in shop to yes so if it's touching the mouse pointer and mouse down so we're doing touching the mouse pointer and mouse down so it'll know that it's actually clicking on the button so we're gonna wait until the mouse is down wait until the mouse is down that means the player is clicking then we'll set the in shop to yes letting the um, pause button know uh, player is inside the shop and then we'll broadcast another message called open shop So this is just to uh, call for all of these other buttons. So then it will, um, so then uh, uh, call to all these buttons. So then it will show up in the shop. So I think, and then we have one more bit of code right here. When I receive open shop, hide, and stop other scripts in the sprite. So then when it's in the shop, it will stop all of this code right here. Okay, stop other scripts in this break. So I think I'll stop here. So that is the shop and the um, and the uh, laser. We did that today. So I'm just gonna go through the code one last time. So if you have anything missing, you can put that down right now. Then we have the laser. So let's try it out. And I forgot one last thing. This instead of 50, it should be 75. So then it'll get bigger, and I just changed the backdrop to the star in the game, but when you're in the shop, it'll change to this backdrop. But now, now when you press P, it doesn't pause everything yet, but now the sh shop can show up when you click P, and then you click on the shop. And yeah, that's what we have for now. As you can see, you can move around, you can shoot lasers at the enemies. And of course, the uh, rocks and all the aliens don't kill the spaceship yet. You press P, and you can open the shop. But nothing happens yet, because we have not done anything to all of these buttons yet. So, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and ring the notification bell. See you guys in the next episode of this game.